Well, in the course of the passing week, it was the turn of speakers of Nigeria's 36 state houses of assembly to throw their weight behind the idea of a state police. Their reason being insecurity, which continues to defy efforts to curtail it. Those who are against the idea say it will be open to exploitation by the political class, who will do anything to remain in power. We will now proceed to have a discussion on this and what further windows could be opened to government, the security agencies and the citizens in the fight to secure the security and safety of all Nigerians. But first, he has to tell us what he thinks about President Tinubu's handling of security in the past one year of his administration. Good morning, Prof. Good to see you. Uh, Professor Usman Good Yusuf. to see you, Steve. Good, mo good morning. Good morning, sir. Good to have you again. It's always, good morning. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Good morning. All right, Prof. Yeah, good let's, to be here, too. All right, thank you so much. All right, let's proceed this way. Um, I read your article. You penned uh, a very strong article recently, a few days ago, in which you highlighted uh, a number of issues, top of which uh, is, is the issue of insecurity in the land. And you didn't uh, spare any detail as to say that this current administration, particularly the president, has not done very well uh, in the area of insecurity. Well, tell us in detail why that is your verdict, given that uh, this administration will be celebrating its first anniversary in the few days' time. And why do you think that where we are now in terms of insecurity is worse than where Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu met it uh, almost 12 months ago? Right, and um, I'm really surprised they are celebrating. What are they going to celebrate? For them to celebrate where they have put Nigerians to in the last one year is honestly been insensitive. Uh, you are restricting the discussion to security, which is what concerns the North, where I live, and Katsina, where I live. In spite of contrary to all the propaganda and half lies you hear managers of our security peddling around that our national security has improved, particularly in the Northwest and North Central, the story is different on the ground. A large swath of our land, rural areas are controlled by terrorists. Villages are still ransacked and pillaged. Our women have been raped. And the, our farmers cannot go to the farm because they are chased off the farm. And when they go to farm, they are levied. Our schools, since it's been 10 years since the tragic incidents of uh, of Boko Haram abducting 276 girls from, from, uh, from Chibok. It's been 10 years. In the eight months of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we witnessed eight mass school abductions from Federal University Gusau, Federal University Dusumma, in Nekiti there was one, and in Gada there was one, and most recently in Koriga. So fellow Nigerians, in 10 years, we are still seeing these mass abductions, and this is what is imperiled education in the North. Our highways, I've had the National Security Advisor saying the highways are, uh, are secure. National Security Advisor do not insult us, that are living here and seeing the nightmare that this insecurity is bringing us. The highways in Nigeria, particularly in the Northwest, they are as unsafe as they have, been, they have ever been. People have been abducted and killed at will by these terrorists. So do not take an early uh, victory lap. Insecurity is imperiling the lives of people in the north. There are three main problems we see in the north. Pervasive insecurity, excruciating poverty, and hunger in the land. And the failure of the government, the states, and the federal government to secure our people, for them to live their livelihoods, for them to go to the farm and farm. They are not asking for much. They are not asking for Lagos, Calabar Highway, where you spend 15.6 trillion, 
56% of the national budget was spent on that, while our people have been, have, have been taking hostages every time. So mass abducting children and you getting them out is no success, it's failure. Look at the school in, in Koriga, Kaduna State, where these children were, were abducted. Looked like an abattoir. Schools are not safe. Well, you brought out the 200 and whatever number of, of children from Koriga, send them back home. How have you made that school safe? How have you made our schools safe? That our, that our parents, that we can send our children to school. 400 women were abducted in, 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 in Borno on the 3rd of March. Nobody is talking about them. Nobody. They are unaccounted for and they are lost. Nobody is talking about them from the government of Borno to the federal government to this national security advisor. Nobody is talking about them. So please do not insult us and tell us security is better. It isn't. It isn't. Because the way we are doing things, we are just doing, we are just doing a fire brigade approach. The military is taking hits all over the place. From Delta to Zamfara to Niger to Katsina. Our soldiers have been ambushed and killed every day. In the last eight months, it's been reported that 500 officers and men have lost their lives in ambush by these terrorists. And any four that ambushes you has a better intelligence than you. Where are we seeing this? Where are we losing soldiers, officers, and men in ambushes to this ragtag uh, terrorist? So please, please, and please, security is not better. And we get insulted when we hear those that are supposed to advise the president coming to tell the world at no less a place than the convocation of Usman Danfudio University that security is better. No, it isn't. It isn't. And we must do better. And the way it's been done, we are not going to get there. Taking care of the security in the north, that which I know of, you must be able to do it sincerely, in a very strategic way, holistically, and involving everybody. And I've said it time and time again, banditry is a social problem that has been left to, to fester, and we are now increasingly militarizing it. It's not a military problem, and it can never be won on the battlefield. A dialogue is a legitimate, legitimate tool in any warfare, and we must do that. Zamfara State Governor is saying, oh, there's no dialogue. See where we are today? He's fighting with the Minister of State from Zamfara. And I want all the state governors in the north that have, that have, that have created this, their armed state militias to tell us, tell Nigerians, is security better today than when they came? All these their state militias, what they have done is they have stirred the, the, the harness nest and increased the bloodshed. We need elders to come in, calm things down. We need bloodshed to reduce. We need this conflict demilitarized. We need our military back to the barracks and, 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 and save our young men and women from, from being killed all over the place. The only way to do it is to negotiate, is to go and do dialogue. It's not the job of the military. The military did not bring this mess. It is politicians that brought this mess. The military is brought in to clean after their mess. And they cannot do that because it is not a military problem. No amount of Tucano jets or whatever jets will solve this problem. We are putting the military in a very difficult situation. Politicians are messing this thing up. And hey, where were the, where were the state governors? 10 northern state governors went to America to look for solutions to security problems in their land. I've said it again and again, banditry, all our social security problems are local. Solutions must be found locally, not in Abuja, New York City, London, or Washington, D.C., or anywhere else. Go back home and take care of your problems. I see them in the United States telling the Americans, oh, we have issues with no water, we are agrarian, we are, they are the ones to tell you this. For three days you sit down there and just vomiting intelligence to them, instead of sitting down home here and sort yourselves out. Oh, governors are buying armored uh, personnel carriers, APCs. To do what? 
Is that your job? Is that your responsibility? You're supposed to build hospitals and schools and provide employment. You're wasting money on this things instead of sitting down and coming, bringing dialogue and bring peace to your people. There's not going to be peace in this country. There's not going to be any development without reconciliation of our communities. This is not the job of the military. All of us must come in, reconcile, fighting, fighting communities, fighting communities before any development happens. I say this because recently I heard the federal government gave 50 billion Pulaku initiative to go and build clinics here and there. I laugh. You're just throwing good money after a very bad idea. The first and foremost thing you should do is find ways to reconcile communities. And only elders, only uh, clerics, only traditional rulers, only people in the community concerned citizens can come in and bring peace to their land. Military will not bring peace to Mangu. Military will not bring peace to Zamfara. Military will not bring peace to, 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 to Kaduna or Niger. Local people must bring peace to themselves. The military, the military is overstretched. It's all over, deployed all across this country. Recently, the military pulled out of three, two infested, bandit infested zones in Maru and in, in Shiroro. They've taken a lot of hits. They pulled out, unannounced, on, and left the people that way. It's an indication that should worry us. The military is getting fed up of this. Fed up of this. Our boys are getting battle fatigue. We can solve these problems by everybody getting involved and, and, and solving this problem. These are internal conflicts we must solve. You go to Washington, D.C. to tell them about problems in Zamfara or about problems in the Plateau or about problems in Benue when you guys have never sat down. No of these governors have sat down for three days, either in Kaduna or Nips, to discuss our problems. No, no, they went to Washington, D.C. So the whole thing is messed up. The governors have the levers of the drivers of insecurity. And they know that, not the military. Not the military. Take care of these problems, these things will be solved cheaply. Not by bombs, you cannot use bombs to, look at, you find a place where uh, vigilantes are killing Fulanis. Fulanis are killing vigilantes. All of them are armed. So what happens when the Air Force comes? Who do they bomb? Who do they bomb? And I hear the Air Force saying, yeah, we have decimated uh, a, a thousand terrorists. How can you tell that from the sky? Thank you, Professor. So when we're doing it is wrong. Thank you, Professor. I'd like to ask you about um, something you mentioned earlier because you spoke about the current governor of Zamfara State, um, Dauda Lawal, having uh, issues with his predecessor, who is the current minister for defense, Matawale. Now, that seems to be a political issue. However, if there is a state governor and we have a minister of defense from the state, who do you believe is more responsible for security in Zamfara state at this moment? Is it the minister in charge of defense or is it the governor? And if it is the governor, should he then be allowed to have state police to secure his people because right now people are feeling vulnerable and you spoke about dialogue and how the governor of Zamfara wants to dialogue however with people feeling vulnerable there has been a proliferation of self-defense militias and people self-arming themselves in these communities so going back to Dauda Lawal and Matawale, the Honorable and the Executive Governor of Zamfara State, who do you believe is more responsible for the safety and security of his people? And should that mean that governors should be allowed to have state police? No. Okay, back to the, the political shenanigans between the Governor of Zamfara State and his predecessor, the, 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 the Minister of State Defense. And I spoke in Hausa. This is shameful and irresponsible of both of them. It's not about any one of them, it's about the people. They must work together, and I've said it again and again, if they cannot, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, the Commander-in-Chief should knock their heads and get things sorted out. It's not about their politics. People are being killed. Zamfara is near and dear to me because that's where I spent my formative years, my, 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 my early, my secondary school years. This is not the Zamfara. They need to show some maturity, and I don't see that. What you see them doing around is, is going on media and fighting each other. How, for goodness sake, can the, can the governor 
control security without the center helping him. They must work together. They must. I have seen, we have seen the benefit of dialogue in Zamfara. And currently people are saying, go to Shinkafi. Shinkafi is quiet because they have done, the villagers have, have dialogued with, with the bad guys. But go to Zurmi, go to Maru, go to all these other places. They are all killing fields. What's the governor doing? Half the time he's not in Zamfara. And this, this, uh, this uh, what, what do you call them? These vigilantes, you, you, you give them, you give them pop action guns, and they are taking the laws into their hand. They are the executioners, they are the prosecutors, they are the police, they kill all over the place. You don't do that. We need some mature heads in, in governance, and I don't see that. Between the governor of Zamfara State and the minister of state uh, uh, defense, they need to look and, 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 and tell themselves, this is not about them. This is about their people. And they are the ones, it is their, it is their feud, their infantile, their childish feud that is causing all these problems in Zamfara. They must work together. Well, B President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will look at Zamfara people and say, what's your problem? I gave your son the Minister of Defense. Why are you not able to bring peace? Well, the, the, the governor in the state is saying, I'm going to fight him for what? You must work together and bring peace. It's not about you. It's about our people. And all the governors in northern Nigeria, where were they when state police was discussed in Abuja? They were in Washington, D.C. It was primarily meant for them, that discussion. Where were they? They were missing in action. They were in Washington, D.C., complaining to strangers, telling them to come and help them. I don't see any responsible, responsible governance. And this is why we are where we are. Bad governance and corruption. All these problems can be solved, and nobody can solve it for us. Zamfara is the Niders. Zamfara is the root of, of, of banditry in, in, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If we don't take care of Zamfara, we'll only be going after the branches of the cancer that has already spread. Not in Abuja. Big plans from Abuja have not worked over the last eight years during Buhari's time. And who, why do we think it will work? Why do we think it will work? What are we doing differently now than what we were doing during Buhari? I was reviewing my clips over the last four years in Katsina. I started with, oh, four local governments are under siege. Three local, eight local governments, ten local governments. Now, eight years after President Muhammad Buhari, 22 out of 34 local governments in Katsina, 65% of Katsina are under siege. Tell me how it's getting better. And I want us to review a year in the security in the north. In those states where the governors have, have created this armed militia, is security better? Are people back to farm? Bloodshed less? Are women raped less? Come on, people, governors, God Almighty has given you this responsibility you swore with your holy book. You will do the right thing. All right. You protect the people. And all these all this, uh, state militia you see, where is the center? Mm. I don't see the federal government, I don't see the NSA, I don't see the military getting involved in them and uh, reading them the riot act. You cannot do that. Mm. All right, Prof. Come on. Uh, we are not getting it right. All we have done is, yeah. is, is made, made it worse. Okay, Prof, let me, let me quickly cut in there so that we can also dimension the uh, conversation properly. Uh, you've highlighted all the yields. Uh, you've blamed, uh, to an extent, uh, the... Uh, the, uh, Mr. Uh, the NSA, no Ribadu, uh, but I wonder why you think, or what would be your view as to why the North continues to be vulnerable as far as uh, insecurity is concerned in the country. Uh, you have apportioned some blame uh, to the NSA, but of course the Northerner he is, is the NSA, the same way that the Northerner is the Vice President, Kashim Shetima, a Northerner, is the, is the CDS, uh, 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 General Christopher Musa, who, by the way, invited, uh, you know, uh, Harry, uh, 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 Prince Harry and Meghan Markle the other time because of the Invectors Games. Another is the Chief Security Officer to President Tinubu, as you know. Even his ADC from, from Quara is also another. Why then do you think that those who are 
in authority who are northerners are not sufficiently addressing the problem of the north. And why do you think that the north uh, continues to be vulnerable to bandits who apparently are from the north ravaging their own in the north? What therefore do you think that this administration should do differently from what Muhammadu Buhari did in eight years? All right, it was on this program I said it. I mean, we've had eight years of President Muhammad Buhari, and now fast forward, here we are. The Vice President, number four, the Speaker, the, the Vice President, number two, the Speaker, number four, all the Ministers of Defense, the most senior military officer, the Minister of Police Affairs, the National Security Advisor are from the North. I said it, I was the first to say it on this, your program, and that we, are, we in the North, we need to look at your, ourselves and ask that question, why? And, and all these new entrants, the new NSA, the CDS, they are new entrants into this. We've had an NSA, an NSA prior to that, the longest serving NSA, all we had from him each time, just screaming and talking uh, grammars that are meaningless. But here we are. So it's something we need to look at and ask ourselves why. I'm a doctor. Why am I into this? Because this country has given my generation more than we can ever give back. Where we, I don't see us, if I die today, I will not be able to leave this country the way our parents left it for us. Question is one, corruption and bad governance, leaders of our time, they were good custodians of that which they were invested with. They trained us well. They invested in us. We went into the world from the village primary and secondary schools we went into the world and competed favorably in some of the best centers in the world. We are back home. We are not going to fold our arms and see that. Primarily, we must look at ourselves in the north. Just don't go around Abuja in your big black SUVs and, 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 and positions. Positions mean nothing if you don't make, translate that position into actionable, actionable things to benefit your people. Your people voted you in. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, I said it again and again, does not know our insecurity and from his words and deeds, sees all of that as irritants. He's more interested in the economy. He's handed the, 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 the listen to you. And everybody is doing his own. Governors are acting as supreme, they are sovereign. Nobody will sit down collectively together, all of them. All these problems are solvable. Close the door. Where are we where we are? pervasive insecurity that you've not been able to, to, to secure this country for the past eight years. Excruciating poverty and hunger in the land of plenty. Our people in the north are lining up like defeated people. While in the south they are building a 15.6 trillion highway. We in the north, we are not doing well. We are here in Abuja distributing money to themselves. The Ningi Gate, you forgot? So the failure is ours. I've said it again and again. Position means nothing. All these SUVs you're going around is in mean nothing. Because all of you, we've had chiefs of army staff, chiefs of service, ministers, whatever. When they retire, nobody can go back home and spend the weekend without these big black guns. We are all IDPs in Abuja. We must go back home and fix our land. And only us can do it. Not the military, but us. Military is overstretched. Military cannot do this. It's overstretched all over the, all, all over the country. So fellow Nigerians, I've said it. I'm the first to say it. We have failed our people. We leadership of the North. We leadership election and winning election and, and winning power Pro mean nothing Prof. if you don't translate it into, Prof. into good. Prof, yes. uh, just in, in 10 seconds, yes. do you I, think that the state police that all the speakers of the Houses of Assembly have endorsed will play any role, any positive role, as we wrap up this uh, segment of the, of, the, of the program? Do you think that it will play a positive role, state police? Yeah, the reason, and the, and the big concern is this, 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 this governors don't use them as their, as their political police. Like they are now using this, this state militia. The whole reason for asking for state police is because there is no boots on the ground, either the police or the military, to police our people. 
So they're asking for this, but we must be able to refine it. All members of the State House of Assembly are, 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 are appointed by, by the governors. So there has to be responsible leadership for this police to work. But we need more policing to police our villages, to police our, our, our towns. Security, the way it's been done, is not run properly. Everybody must be involved. Leadership must be responsible. This fight between Zamfara and, and, and the center is on call for, and it's not in the interest of the people. We cannot continue seeing this way. In, insecurity, no development will come with, without security. People of the North, open your eyes. The South is there developing 15.6 trillion highway. We are here, uh, women lining up to receive cups of rice. This is mm. shameful, and the leaders must must look at themselves and remember that on that day that is certain, God Almighty will ask them, what did they do when he gave them this responsibility? All right. So far they are not doing well. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed, uh, Professor Osman, uh, for joining us on the morning show today. We do appreciate it. Thank you.